Yo, when I tell you that this New York Times article, everyone's talking about Sandoval right now and how he compared himself to OJ Simpson and George Floyd and everyone's up in arms about it. But the article itself, when we get through it, which we're about to, wild, wild. I hope you're ready. Let's go. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, Surf Fresh, all week long. Now, let's dive in. Whew. I want to know who has actually read the article. If not, don't worry. I read it all so that you don't have to. And again, let me just tell you, this article, you guys, is wild. Like. First of all, the, um, the, the shade that this author throws throughout the entire article is hilarious. Um, it just, it's so good. And Sandoval is just so, like, not in touch with reality. Um, so let's, let's get into it. So the article itself... Uh, came out today, came out, or came out Tuesday morning. Sorry. So I, if you're listening to this on the podcast right now, this is a pre-recording from Tuesday night because I am taping Jeff Lewis live first thing in the morning at Sirius XM. So if you're catching this right as it drops, then there's a good chance that you may still be able to catch me on Jeff Lewis live on Sirius XM today, Wednesday. Um, I believe it's from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific. So 9 a.m. Pacific, 9, 10, 11, 12 Eastern. 9 Pacific, 9 LA time, 12 New York time. So you can tune in. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So get ready. I'm going to be on Jeff Lewis Wednesday at 9 a.m. on Sirius XM. But let's get into the Tom Sandy balls of it all because this article dropped and people are wild and out about it uh we'll get into like the salacious scandal part and then we'll get into the full recap so the article is titled how tom sandoval became the most hated man in america he turned last year's season of vanderpump rules into the best reality tv his the best in reality tv's history and ruined his life in the process <clears throat> And then there's one quote specifically that has gone a viral, and that is where he compares himself to O.J. Simpson and George Floyd, sort of. So the, the quote that he gave was, I'm not a pop culture historian, really, but I witnessed the O.J. thing, the O.J. Simpson thing, and George Floyd, and all these big things, which is really weird to compare this to that, I think, but do you think in a weird way it's a little bit the same? Now, that quote in and of itself, out of context, sounds really bad. And it is really bad. Listen, I'm not even going to defend it. Like, it's it's bad. Um, but I, I guess for me, I'm like, I understood what he was trying to say in terms of, like, media exposure and coverage. But my thing is, it's like, you had so many other options. Like, a great comparison could have been like, oh, it's like the Tiger Woods scandal, right? That's not to compare his celebrity to Tiger Woods celebrity, because we do get into Tom Sandoval's celebrity in the article. It's so good. The T in the article, you guys, is so fucking good. It's so good. Um, but he just said he was recording. Yeah, we're recording this live, guys. Um, but it will air on the podcast tomorrow. Sorry, I digress. Um, but I understood what he was trying to say of like, it just got so much media attention, right? I mean, I don't think that you're in the same level of like a... Also, you have to realize like there are tragedies that came with both the George Floyd thing and the OJ Simpson thing. Like people lost their lives in these things. You can't compare that to an affair. Now, in terms of media scrutiny and scandal, sure. But again, pick like the Brad and Angelina affair. Pick, you know, where remember or, or Tiger Woods, remember with the golf clubs and she was busting out the window. I mean, that was a great one. The Tiger Woods affair was probably the best comparison that he could have made. I mean, just in what world would he ever think any sort of comparison? Like just the George Floyd stuff alone, like we all like that was a wild year. 2020 was an intense year. We all went through so many emotions. Like it was so everyone was so on edge that year with just the global pandemic and you know the the you know social uprise and like 
it was a wild year that to even compare anything to that is just so out of touch with reality um, and just so dumb. But so the author herself even kind of touches on this and she's like, I kind of knew what he was saying and I kind of get what he was trying to say. But like, if anything, all this really shows is how out of touch with reality Sandoval has become, which is really what it is. So he then issued a statement. Again, we'll get into the full article in just a sec. He issued a statement on his Instagram stories, which if you see his statement, it's literally just like, he's like, oh, let me just type this into my Instagram stories. My intentions behind the comments I made in New York Times Magazine were to explain the level of national media attention my affair received. The comparison was inappropriate and ignorant, and I'm incredibly sorry and embarrassed. Uh, you think? Um... It just is some, he is something else. I'm just like, bro, like you keep getting in your own way. Like him and Rachel just don't know how to get out of their own way. They can have a great, they have, there's potential and opportunity with them, but it's just, so that's my thing about him, the quote itself and um, his reaction to, I think his statement is mediocre. It's, not even a good like way to address like I get it he was I get what he was trying to say originally with the original statement but his like new Instagram story statement like it's just dumb I don't know how he gets himself out of this one because it blew up so much and it's like literally gone viral and now he's apologized for it it's just and he's gonna be like oh god like people just want to hate on me just for the sake of hating on me god and like he's not gonna get it he's gonna think that this is just because people hate him for the scandal. He's like, I can't do anything. I can't do nothing right, man. Oh, God, bro. It's just like, oh, you know, and he's just going to play that whole thing. And he's just going to be the martyr, right? Oh, everybody hates me. Of course. I told you guys, everyone's just going to hate me for like, they hate me. Cause I was, I didn't fair with Raquel, but like Ariana's mean to me. And like, she had sex with her t-shirt on. Like, God, real hot of her, huh? Shut up, Katie. And so it's just, it is what it is. And that's just the sandy balls of it all. Okay. Now let's get into this article. He, he Listen, he's out of touch, but this isn't even, like when you see, hear some of the other things that Sandoval says, I was just like, wow. Okay. So the article I thought started off a little soft on Sandoval, you know, because they referenced the scandal and how the scandal blew up Ariana's career. And so at first I was kind of like, all right, this is, are like I'm already you know over this fluff piece. Um, it's written by Irina Ale- Alexander. Irina Irina Alexander. Um, I hope she's not the one that wrote that Bethany Frankel reality reckoning one because that was trash. Um, but this one, this article is good, and there's tea, so much tea, right? It's great. Um, but so anyway. It goes in a little soft and it, cause it kind of talks about how Ariana just like had this like massive like gl- blow up in her career and she's killing it. And it's all because of the scandal and he didn't really get to capitalize off the scandal. But then she gets to the part, she gets to this part where, um, before we get to the George Floyd and the, um, OJ Simpson of it all, which again, the fact that he even brought himself up in comparison to OJ Simpson. And now he's just like, I'm the most hated, hated man in the world. It's like, what are you even talking, like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, but like, you're doing it to yourself. Like, you're making yourself less and less likable, okay? And are you really like O.J. Simpson? Like, can we really make that comparison? I don't know. Did you wear a glove when you were banging Rachel? That would be very helpful with for the jury, okay? Right now, sorry, Sandoval, jury's still out with you. But so before we even get to that, there's a part where he tells the author, he tells Arena. Irina, I don't know how to pronounce that properly. I apologize. But so he tells her that he thinks that he got more hate than Danny Masterson, who's a convicted rapist. And I'm just like, bro, why? Like, and the thing is, mind you, he's taping or he's, yeah, he's doing this article from the comfort of his home with his publicist present. Okay. And the the way the author shades his publicist the entire time, like just completely 
shades the publicist first by describing her as a 23 year old publicist that didn't even flinch when he made the Danny Masterson comment. And she paints the publicist out to be like this total like fangirl of Sandoval's and a fangirl of the show saying that she was just as interested in Sandoval talking about his life as the reporter was. And I was like, Ooh, she is dragging this poor little 23 year old girl. But listen, who threw this little 23 year old girl up into we, this is the New York times. And this is Tom Sandoval. Like what fucking idiot decided that they were going to throw the intern in. Okay. That is not, this is, this is game time. This is when you pull in the big power publicist, right? Where's Lori Kay when you need her? She's off taking selfies with, with Jack's in Montreal. <laughs> but so talks about Danny Masterson and how he, you know, he, Danny should have gotten more hate, but I got more. Cause I was like banging Raquel, but like I was in love, man. Oh God. He was in love with her. He says that in the article. So she writes that Sandoval wanted to record the whole interview and he was very, he was super excited about doing this interview. Right. And he, at one point is like telling her, he's like, Oh, like, do you want to record everything? He's like, you can record it on. She's like, Oh, I've never like had a, you know, a, my subject piece tell me they want me to record all of it. And she was like, he was loving this. Like, he was super excited about this interview. And so he goes in and he's telling her about, and I think she does record it, which is, probably why she's so confident putting down some of these quotes. Um, but so she says that Sandoval told her that Scandoval just ruined his life. And then she very nonchalantly drags his publicist quite a bit more. She goes into detail about how um, his life got turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute and sit right there and tell you how about kind of the, the, the Prince of Bel-Air. So he says that his life... It felt like uncut gems, you know, Julia Fox and uncut gems. He says that that's what it felt like. His life was living, you know, living out IRL in uncut gems. I haven't seen uncut gems, but apparently it's about, I don't know, something terrible. So he's like, yeah, that's my life. Remember when Kanye said his life was get out? And we're like, Kanye, get out. Um, so he says that he gets into special forces and how he went to go to New Zealand to go film special forces. But he, get this. He says that he believes that special forces was rigged against him and that he thinks that the producers didn't want him to win special forces. Then we get into the George Floyd of it all, which I read you guys the, the exact quote, which I'll read it again for you in case you forgot how eloquently it was spoken. I'm not a pop culture historian, really, but I witnessed the O.J. Simpson thing the O.J. Simpson thing, you know, the, that murder trial, that thing. Um, I witnessed the O.J. Simpson thing and George Floyd and all these big things, which is really weird to compare this to that, I think. But do you think in a weird way, it's a little bit the same? And the, the reporter was just like, what? And then she makes note that Riley, his 23-year-old 23, 23 fangirl publicist, was ferociously texting on her phone at the time rather than paying attention to what was actually going on. And then the author does clarify. She says that she understood what Sandoval was trying to convey, but it's clear that at this point, the whole experience has really just made him lose perspective. So the day wraps because he has to get ready because he's going out for the night. God, man, God. Ugh. And so Riley then tells this author, Irina, that oh you know sometimes he just he says things and he doesn't think and he doesn't even remember saying them the next day and you know some he just has you know his off days and so the author was then scheduled to attend Irina was scheduled to attend his confessional filming for Vanderpump Rules which I believe was taking place the next day or maybe a couple of days afterwards. But so she's like, but the morning of I'm getting in my car and I'm getting ready to go. And next thing you know, I get a text message saying that Sandoval wasn't feeling his best that day and I shouldn't come after all. And she was like, okay. And then she's like, but then the next day, Alex Baskin reached out to me. And then after that, another network executive reached out to me because apparently they got word about his comment about George Floyd and they like kind of wanted to like get ahead of it and do some damage control. But like, mm, okay. 
Good luck with that one. So they even like later in the article, you find out that like Alex Baskin takes them on a tour of evolution. Like she, he takes the author to like tour the offices of evolution and all that stuff. And she even drags the office to him. Like this girl is just shady, shady, shady and living for it. Right. Living for all the shade that she throws in the article. It's really funny. Um, but so she really hangs Sandoval out to dry Sandoval says that, you know, he thinks it's cool how popular the show has become because of all of this. She writes that apparently Sandoval makes around, or I guess the cast makes around 35000 per episode on Vanderpump, which is different from their first season when they only made, I think, 10000 for the entire season of Vanderpump. But she describes, like, the Bravo fandom, Bravo world as, like, pro wrestling. And these players are pro wrestlers. And at BravoCon, they go on stage and they throw jabs at each other. And then the audience boos or the audience cheers. And it's interesting because I remember when Lisa Rinna got booed um, at last year's BravoCon or the BravoCon before, 2023, 2022. And Lisa Rinna got booed there and she talked about it feeling like it being pro wrestling too. And you get booed and it's like you're a pro wrestler. But so she talks more about, or Sandoval, sorry, talks more about special forces and how, you know, Scandoval is what helped him become the featured star in the promo for special forces. But he's like, oh, I just, I just wish I could have capitalized off of it more, you know, God, man. And so the author's like, yeah, sure. And he's like, you see that billboard? That's me. It's my face on the billboard. Like, that's me. I'm Tom Sandoval. And so uh, he's like, you want a picture? And so she's like, okay. And he's like, see, but they, that only happened because of Scandoval, because I fucked Raquel. I got that. I fucked Raquel, and I got the billboard. But he does wish that he had cashed in on it a little bit more. But he says that brands just don't want to touch him, that they don't want anything to do with him. And he even reveals that he was into, actually he doesn't, but I believe his his manager or his, yeah, his manager reveals that he was in talks to do a Chippendales residency. Tom Sandyballs was going to shake his little dingling, his old little cocky cock at Chippendales and he was going to do a whole residency. It's like, okay, calm down, Erica Jane, with your residency. But apparently they like ghosted him and, and contract stalled. So you were about to get the Sandy Balls on display, on display each and every day, every day, every day. <laughs> the author then drags Sir by saying that, you know, because Tom then gave her like a tour of Tom Tom. And she talks about Sir. And she's like, I tried the food there and the food was terrible. I was like, I agree, girl, but you're writing this in the New York Times. Like she, like nobody was off limits. She was going hard on everyone. So she talks about the tour that Tom gave her. And she's like, and when he was giving me a tour, you know, in between when he wanted to show me his Chippendales moves, she's like, he pointed out like, oh yeah, that's the spot right there where Ariana ripped off my necklace and she was hitting me. I was like, okay, Kristen Doty. So now Ariana's rap declined to comment for the article altogether. Um, but I know in the past she has denied like ripping the necklace off of him and stuff. And that is clarified in the article. I don't know. But he's like, come look at, don't sit at this table because this is the bad table. But here's the good table. And then like two fans came up and they're like, oh my God, Tom Sandoval. And he's like, yeah, it's me, Tom Sandoval. And they're like, oh my God, we love you. This place is so awesome. He's like, yeah, I know. I designed it. I'm an owner. You know, that's my face on the wall. Tom Sandoval. Uh. So... She then gets into talking to Alex Baskin and they get into this whole conversation about how about unscripted TV and how unscripted TV, they expected it to have this big boom after, you know, the writer strike and the actor strike. And so there was a lot of investment or like upfront interest in unscripted television. But now he's like, mm, I don't know. I think like it's the opposite. And we're probably going to see about two thirds of what we see on reality television with unscripted TV. but. He says that the national attention that came from Scandoval made the show really hard to film. He says because of all of the people that would show up and all the paparazzi and all the, the times that people would get scooped for um, storylines or, you know, like the photo from Lake Tahoe where they're, they have that photo and you see Sheena and Sandoval together. And then like that became a whole thing. And they said that, that they had to really break the fourth wall this season. But he says the cast really turned on Tom Sandoval. And so at one point they had to have a whole come to Jesus meeting with the cast where they called them into the offices to like sit down with them and I guess tell them that they needed to film with Sandoval. I don't know. But he does talk about he references that call to that come to Jesus moment where he had to tell the cast like we need to work through this. 
And he said that they did their best to squeeze out a good season from the fallout of Scandable, but he's he doesn't sound very sure moving forward. So it kind of, to me, sounds like this is the end of Vanderpump and that they don't really have any clue or idea how the show moves forward, if it even moves forward at all. Again, I always thought they should have marketed this as the final season. I've said that for a long time. I said that going into the season, they should tell us this is the final season, make it a shorter season, and like let everyone wrap up their storylines here, you know? Excuse me. Um, Because like at this point, like I don't know how much more you can squeeze out of this cast. Like their friendships are kind of fractured. They're all moving in different relate. They're all moving in different directions in their life. Their relationships aren't really what they used to be. And it's just, you know, it's time to just let them sail off into the sunset, ride on a high. I didn't hate that they, I don't think that last season should have been the final season of Vanderpump Rules. I think we needed a conclusion season. I just hope this is the conclusion season that they give us. And they're hopefully working to edit it in a way that gives us that closure, you know? <laughs> then we get into Rachel. We get lots of Rachel. Apparently she made $19,000 per episode last season, which good for her, you know? And he was just like, I don't know what she wants from us now, but she made money. And she says that, you know, she didn't see, or sorry, the author says that she didn't see San Sandoval for another two weeks after this. Um, oh, wait, there was a part that I seemingly glossed over. Maybe I'd cut it from my notes, but I'd put it, I think, because I was texting people as I was going through the article, and I was like, oh, my God, you're not going to believe this. But so it also gets revealed in the article about Rachel and how Rachel wanted to come back to Vanderpump Rules. But not only did she want a pay increase, but Rachel also wanted a development deal with Bravo. <laughs> like she wanted, I'm like, a oh, development deal for what? To develop what exactly? Like, what do you want to develop? It was so strange to me. Um, but she wanted more money and she wanted to develop content for Bravo. Like, okay, why? So you can pitch them ideas like Bethany Frankel. Remember Bethany Frankel's great ideas when she wanted to do Ebony and Ivory with her and NeNe Leakes, where she takes you to the Hamptons and and um, and uh, NeNe takes you to the South. And I was like, what am I, what did she just say? I was like, did what did came out of, out of the skinny girl scoop cottage cheese mouth? There's, I don't, I, I'm used to cottage cheese going in it, but the bullshit that's coming out of it, I'm a little confused by. Hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I was like, okay, good luck with that, Rachel. That was probably one of the juiciest parts is that she wanted a development deal, which now we know makes sense as to why she, they didn't bring her back. So like, we're not going to give you a development deal. You're stupid. <laughs> Girl, bye. And now she's doing her flop podcast, which is funny because the author of the article also drags her in that sense too. Because she's just like, Rachel left the show to focus on her mental health, but then she goes off to stay in the public light by launching a podcast about the show that was bad for her mental health. She's like, it doesn't make sense. And I was like, yeah, I know, because nothing Rachel does make sense. Oh, okay. um, But so she talks about then seeing Sandoval again two weeks after their initial interview for the confessionals. This time there's no Riley. We got rid of 23-year-old fangirl Riley, probably because the publicist was like, or sorry, probably because the author of the New York Times was like, mm, who is this little girl? And little girl, why is she here? You know? But this time, no Riley. We had a Bravo PR executive in the room ready. And she even like goes into like how Tom didn't even really know who this other PR woman was and how... Um, this woman went to like introduce herself to Sandoval basically and like referenced how Tom Sandoval made her like a really good mocktail one time and like, yeah, serve. And it's just like, okay, um, awkward, <laughs> but it seems like Bravo then really, like, really wanted to just make sure they were on top of everything. But it's like, what on top of what? Like he, you can't control what comes out of his mouth. And once it comes out of his mouth, that's really where you're going to struggle the most. You need to do PR training with Sandoval. But she went to go and witness his confessional taping for the new season of Vanderpump Rules. And he talks about, he was telling her the joys of now being single and being a celebrity. And how he told her, and I quote, 
it's a cool muscle to flex. Like, oh, okay. Good, good for you. He was, he's single and he's a celebrity and he likes to flex that. Could you imagine going on a date with Tom Sandoval? He's like, yeah, Tom Sandoval, you know, kind of, kind of on that show, Vanderpool Pools. I don't know if you heard of me. I like being my best friend's girl, you know? I was like, okay. He ain't it, guys. They're, every time I try to give Sandy Balls the benefit of the doubt, he just continues to like put his foot back in his mouth. And I'm just like, yo, Sandy. But so if anybody wants to date a celebrity, he's single, okay? And he loves that he's a celebrity. And then he says that he's glad that he no longer wants to be an actor because acting is easy, according to Tom Sandoval. And he's like, I want to see actors try to do what we do. I want to see actors be reality stars. I'm just like, what am I listening to? He literally was like, acting is easy compared to what we do for a living. I was like, okay, good for you. Not saying that. I mean, I just, I don't think they're comparable. I think they're two different genres. I think they're two different things, you know? But he hopes that his reality career continues for a very long time. And the article ends with the author describing Sandoval sitting in his little confessional chair, looking into the camera with one eyebrow up. And then as soon as cameras start rolling, he has the biggest smile on his face. And she's like, he loves fame and attention. And that's how she ended the article. I was like, damn. <laughs> She really dragged him as like an egotistical prick, or at least that's what she chose to highlight of Tom Sandoval. You know what? Get a girl. Sandoval needs to get a real job. This is his job. What's wrong with that being his job? I hate when people say stuff like that, though. Like when people tell me, get a real job. I'm like, bitch, this is my job. And I'm sure I make more than your minimum wage. Okay. Talk your shit. Bite your lip. Ask for a car where you ride that dick. But yes, Tom Sandoval is a fame whore. He loves the fame. All the fame. Oh, well. said. <laughs> Listen, Christopher, speak on it. With your chest loud and proud, he thinks Sandoval should get a real job. He had a real job. Remember, he was a bartender. He was a model. He did all sorts of things. If they all got real jobs, what would they do? Ooh, let's think about that. Um, well, Tom would be a struggling musician that works as a, as a model slash Uber driver. Um, Katie would go on unemployment. <laughs> um, Schwartzy, I think would work at like a record store and we know that they're extinct, but he would still work there because he believes in the music business. Sheena, I think Sheena would continue to like be a touring like she would be on the road doing her music um i don't know what probably a bartender uh yeah i think a lot of them would stay in the bartender genre if they, listen, they had jobs guys like they they used to be bussers and servers and bartenders like you act like they are kardashians and they just like came on television and that's their whole claim to fame which, I mean, yes, but they did have real jobs at one point, and those jobs are likely to continue going, you know, without the show. They would still be doing those jobs because I don't think they had any other options. Tom will do OnlyFans. I don't think Tom's going to do OnlyFans. So, um, It's just me, Chris. It's so did I when I was 17. Yes, but they were bartenders when they were, like, 30. Now they're like 40, but they were doing this when they were 30, which tells you that they would probably just stay in there. You know, they would just stay in that lane. The show ain't lasting forever. No, I know. I think they see the writing on the wall. Tom was fun with Kristen and playing with makeup. Okay. But yeah, listen, the article was good. I think the biggest takeaways were that the, the show, um, show looks like it's coming to an end. Rachel wanted a development deal. Oh, there is some shade that the author throws that I forgot to put in my notes, but it's on Twitter, um, where she talks about how she's in, in that final um, sit down with Sandoval when he's doing his confessional. And she talks about how she's describing his outfit with this powder blue like jacket that like doesn't really fit him right. And um, 
it's just funny because she's she just she's like I don't know what it is about him. I don't know if it's just the feminine cut of the of the blazer or what, but it just reminded me of that scene from um, the Night Returns where you have Heath Ledger dressed up as the Joker and he's at the hospital dressed up as a nurse. And I was like, she did not just call Tom Sandoval the Joker dressed up as a nurse. Now I want to see this confessional look. Show me the money. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's hilarious. I'm here for it. Bum ba da bum 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 bum. Hey ho, let's go. Katie would attempt something in sales, like what selling Mary Kay. She's gonna sell that Avon. A brand wrap. Yes, Katie would be like, listen, you want some fire brows? Come here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I can see that. All right. Well, that's what I got from the article. It was really funny. It was really juicy. I mean, the Danny Masterson thing, I was like, okay. Tom the Jared, Tom the Jared Leto Joker. Yeah, that's funny. Did you, have you guys seen that picture too, by the way? It's just, I think that photo is hilarious. And now realizing that that's what she sees Tom Sandoval as when she's, um, when she's seen his confessional, I just think it's funny. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, but I did want to let you guys know, well, actually, hold on. I do have, um, I want to talk about the Beverly Hills reunion looks. But before we dive into that, I just want to remind you guys how much we love our little fur babies. Your pet's one of a kind, and so is their journey. So while every playful moment is a memory in the making, sometimes our cats and dogs are just a little too good at getting in trouble. That's why you should check out ASPCA's Pet Health Insurance. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program offers customizable accident and illness plans, making it easier for pet parents like you and me to help your pet get the care they may need. They allow this allows you, they allow you custom plans um, that help ensure that your pet's plan is as unique as they are. Because listen, vet bills can really add up, especially when you're least expecting it. It's simple. Use their app to submit a claim and you'll receive a reimbursement for eligible vet bills directly into your bank account. To explore coverage, visit ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash no filter. That's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash no filter. Again, that is ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash no filter. Oh, crap. This is a paid advertisement. Insurance is underwritten by either Independence, American Insurance Company, or United States Fire Insurance Company, and produced by PTZ Insurance Agency Limited. The ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance. And also, if you're ready for a little convenience, right? You're ready to cut the mess of the DIY meal prep you want to just start eating a little healthier, but you want to take out the guesswork, Factors Delicious ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. And... There's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that'll help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. Flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per six to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. So you don't have to worry about that. No mess, no prep, factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat, no prepping, cooking, or cleaning required. Head to factormeals.com slash nofilter50. That's code, and use code nofilter50 to get 50% off. That's code nofilter50 at factormeals.com slash nofilter50 to rack in that 50%. Mm -mm. Listen, 
believe me when I tell you, I've actually been sleeping very well lately because Ball & Branch makes the softest, most luxurious sheets without any toxins or harsh chemicals. I just got some and they're so delicious. They're so fun to sleep on because they just are so soft and so smooth. You're gonna love them. Your partner will love them. Your pups will love them. Whoever sleeps in the bed with you is gonna love them, okay? They use the rarest 100% organic cotton that's traceable from family farm to your family home. Ball and brand sheets have a natural unmatched softness and only get softer with every wash. You can feel the difference with their 30-night worry-free guarantee. Listen, you'll sleep better at night with the softest sheets from Ball & Branch. Get 20% off your first order when you use promo code Zach, Z-A-C-K, at BallAndBranch.com. That's Ball & Branch, B-O-L-L, B-O-L-L, and Branch.com, promo code Zach. Limited time only. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Let's get it. Okay, did we see the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion looks? Because they are here. They are banging. They are, um, I personally am loving the reunion looks. I think they looked really good. I think the women nailed these looks this year because last year was a little bit. I mean, everyone compared them to Miami reunion looks, which I get. The Miami reunion looks were great. We love Miami. The women were killing it. They had their um, their outfits were like they the colors were great. They were very campy. Um, but I feel like the Beverly Hills ladies from what we've gotten the last few seasons, this is the come up, and I'm very pleased at what they gave us this time because they have not given us much to work with in the past. But I feel like most of these came out good. So let's go through them one by one, step by step. Step by step. Let's see. First up, oh, sorry, technical difficulties. Apologies, apologies. Um, uh, well, if you guys have seen the reunion looks, let me know which one was your favorite thus far. A lot of people are loving Doris look, which. I think it's fine. I think it looks cute, but I was just like, to me, it wasn't really giving. Um, people seem to be, uh oh. Oh, there's my fox. Um, sorry, guys, technical difficulties. And the Wi Fi is acting up. Oh, what a time to be alive. It's okay. It's not like today was a busy day. Okay. Let's start with, let, I guess we'll start with Dorit. Dorit, which to me, she's just out here looking like a, a bag of flaming Hot Doritos, right? It's very flowy. It's very drapey. It's all red. People are loving it. They're like, this is high fashion. This is probably one of my least favorite looks of the batch. I get it. I just don't like a hooded look right? And I think somebody said that she's in her like three Wiseman era. I agree. It's like this big, very big overflowy dress that just like, she's like Mother Mary, you know? And she's just wrapped up in this like big red drape tapestry. And I don't get the fashion of it. Like, it's cute. People so were like, this is one of the best fashion looks ever. And I was like, I don't think it does anything for her body. I don't think it looks all, it's, it's fat and it's drapey that it just kind of like eats her up, you know? We have Crystal, which I said, you know, Crystal is serving Christmas. It's a green dress, low cut, cleavage out. It's a nice dress. It's very Christmassy. I would love to see this in December, but it's also very similar to the dress she wore for her birthday, her 40th birthday that I, guess was cut from the show um her 40th birthday it seems like they cut a lot from this season actually but like it's just it's cute it's cute you know it's fine garcelle actually i think looks great it's very like lisa vanderpump when she was wearing the tom ford dress or lisa Rinna when she was wearing that metallic um 
dress like we've we've kind of seen these dresses before, but it's okay. It's better than, you know, what we've gotten from Garcelle in the past. She's trying. She's working. You know, she's got bills to pay. And she's and she's doing it. She looks I think she looks great here. I don't love her hair. It's like a short bob. But like I just feel like I'm not I don't love the red hair on her anymore. Like I did for a minute and now I'm just kind of like I, I want her to either have like a nice blonde or a darker color. Especially with how close it is to the dress. The lighting and everything, it just looks like it kind of you know, the hair blends with the dress a little too much. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. We have Erica. And Erica, I think, is my favorite look. Um, it's dazzled. She's got the short dress, long sleeves, big, like, you know, devil horn shoulder pads, right? Like, she's just, like, leaning into her villain arc, and I am here for it. I think she looks great. I think her hair looks good. She's got a fun little, like, high pony. But, like, there's also a little bit of, like, a design up top. Um, I think Erica looks great and it's probably my personal favorite. We have Sutton. I also think Sutton looks nice. Sutton's very like Lilo and Stitch. It's like a blue velvet dress. She's got gold heels on. There's like a little flower up top. So it does have like a little Hawaiian vibe to it. And I'm just like, okay, it's cute. I think it's nice. Her hair looks very nice. It's very understated, but like elegant. And I think I think Sun looks great here. Sometimes she has fashion looks that don't do it, but for me, I'm like, I'm here for it. We have Kyle, Kyle Richards, who I said is, is out here trying to, you know, ready to snatch your wife. Get it, Kyle. Get a girl. Get a good girl. I think Kyle looks great. Her dress is similar to Dorit in, less, in the sense that it's a lot of fabric. It's very flowy, so this seems to be the trend right now. We've gotten rid of the, the feathered arms, and now it's just very much lots of tapestry. It's very drapey, very flowy, right? I think Kyle looks great. She's also rocking the green like Crystal. Um, some people were commenting about how the dress just kind of like is too covered up for Kyle. Whereas in the past, she's worn like more of the skimpier, you know, dresses to show a little more, um, show a little more like leg, a little more of arms, whereas this one, she really doesn't show off her body at all. And I'm like, this is the best shape you've ever been in. Like, this is your time to wear a skimpy little dress and like really show off your figure, girl. But she didn't. That's her choice. Got it. Um, we have Kathy Hilton. I think Kathy looks great. Um, I do. So a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people are confused as to why Kathy's at the reunion altogether. I agree. I don't know why they decided to bring Kathy into the reunion. That was a choice and I don't fully understand that choice, but okay. We're doing it. We're here. Let's go. Um, but I think she looks nice. She looks very elegant, very sleek. Um, she looks like she's maybe even on some of that Ozempic because her body be looking tight. She, the cat looks snatched. She looks very, very good. Um, her shoes, like everything. It's just, it's very proper. It's very classy. It's very sleek. I'm here for, she has her little purse. And I'm like, oh, she's ready to go. She's like, I got dinner plans after this. She's like, Sutton, get off the floor. Let's go. We got to wrap this up. <laughs> That's kind of the energy she's giving me in this photo. But listen, I ain't mad at it. She looks great. And then lastly, who do we have? Oh, we have, oh, Anne-Marie. The thing with Anne-Marie is we already saw this dress. It's a blue dress. We already saw it on Therese on the last Potomac reunion. Um, and Marie looks nice. I like her lighter hair. I like the blonde in her hair. I think it looks really good. The dress is pretty. Like I said, we've seen it before, but it's pretty. Um, I think blue works on her. It looks great on her skin tone. It looks great with her hair color. I think for a first reunion dress, it's, it's nice. It's got the long sleeve. She's got the high slit. She's working. Good for you, Anne Marie. Good for you. You're watching this on uh, the YouTube or you're watching this on Spotify. You're actually able to see all of these images. If not, I hope that my narration, my narration of those dresses was sufficient enough for you. Because I do love you and I do appreciate you. Also, I don't know if you guys thought there was a new teaser for um, Bind Beverly Hills that came out today um, with Mauricio. And he's sitting down with his daughters, Alexia. 
and um, Farah, all the daughters are there. Or I don't, I don't think Portia was there, but the older ones are, or at least the three that are on the show with him. They're there and he's sitting down and he's telling them about the breakup from, um, he's telling them about the breakup from Kyle and how Kyle sat him down. It would listen. The thing is, we got a lot of good tea out of it, right? And I think Netflix was like, "Listen, we're gonna they're gonna air the Beverly Hills, uh, Beverly Hills finale, and we're gonna get into it there." So at this point, let's just let's scoop them because they're ha- they're not happy that Kyle isn't allowed to film for Netflix because of her contract with Bravo. So Netflix was like, "Let's get it, okay?" Boom. And so I think it it was a really like a tender moment with him and his daughter, his daughters. And he was telling them how Kyle came to him and she wanted to, you know, she didn't feel connected and she's the one that asked for the separation. And she also, um, he also gets into the fact that, um, there are allowed to see other people and he's like, I'm not going to, excuse that or seeing other people or allowed to see other people we're not talking about it which i think kyle also kind of opened up recently about as well that they are allowed to see other people they just don't really tell each other about what the situation is and i think marie says like you do what you do i do what i do and nobody needs to know about it and that's kind of how they're approaching their marriage at this point so oof, it was a good clip um, it's making me want to watch beverly hills and now we we're going to see it play out uh, tonight, Wednesday night on um, Real House of Beverly Hills. Here we go. Buying Beverly Hills for House of Beverly Hills. We're going to get it all. Zach, do you record in your underwear? No, I don't record in my underwear. I record in my clothes. Why would I record in my underwear? See, I'm wearing jeans. I even have shoes on. I always wear my shoes in the house. I know some people are like, that's weird. Why is it like it's weird that people wear shoes in the house? I wear my shoes all day, every day. All right. Uh, my brain is wonky because it's still a little hungover. And I have to get up early for Jeff Lewis tomorrow. But thank you guys. Or, well, I guess it's today. If you're listening to this on Wednesday morning, I am going to be live on Jeff Lewis Live um, at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern. 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern. I will be live tonight with Josh Wednesday night. I'll be live Wednesday night with Josh to recap um, Vanderpump Rules. Get ready for that. Let's get it. Who had the love connection at your live chat? Ooh, well, maybe we'll save. No, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you who had the love connection. Who do you think had the love connection, Christopher? Yeah. I'm curious. We can talk about it in the members only, but um yeah all right well that's all i got for you guys tonight give me a follow at just plain back like i said be sure to tune into jeff this live on the serious xm um i love you guys i appreciate you guys have a wonderful rest of your it's on serious xm less you can watch jeff lewis on serious xm you can download the serious xm app right now so that you can listen all right, give me a follow, Just Plain Zach. Follow the podcast at No Fits with Zach. And stay tuned because more episodes will come. I'll be back live Thursday morning. All right. I love you. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you later. Let's get out. Bye. 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 Bye.